I recently went to the Lazio region of Italy to tour some of the megalithic polygonal walls that the area has in great numbers. These are also often referred to as Cyclopean walls. This type of ancient masonry attracts a lot of attention because it's a complicated construction method that would have required specialist skills. And no one can agree on exactly how old they are or which culture built them. As with anything megalithic, the incredible expertise of the masons is not what we expect from ancient times. In polygonal walls, the irregularly shaped blocks fitted so well together that no kind of mortar was needed. Essentially, polygonal walls are made up of irregularly shaped blocks of megalithic proportions. To prepare a block to add to the wall, the ancient masons would have needed to carve it to fit an irregularly shaped block already in position, and so on and so forth. Blocks were not prepared uniformly as squares or rectangles. I'm doing a whole video series on this subject, not all in one go though, so that we can explore each village and town where the walls are found and take an in-depth look at the traditional history of each place, as well as the legends and anomalies associated with them. In this particular episode, I want to outline what we generally know and don't know about these polygonal walls and where the main arguments sit. Before I get into it, here are photographs of a few examples of them that I took on my trip, just so you have an idea of how they look, if you don't know already. This one runs along the southern side of the Roman sanctuary of Fortuna Primigenia in Palestrina. Above that, the sanctuary sits on six terraces cut into the hill, and the remains of it have very different masonry to the polygonal wall at the bottom, as will become clear when I do a video on Palestrina. Near the Porta del Sole in the same town, this other section of wall was excavated. Here we have part of the very extensive fortification wall at the small village of Castel San Pietro Romano, just north of Palestrina. In Alatri, there are many sections of the wall still extant. This part is near the Roman gateway to the Acropolis called Porta Maggiore. For my research, I'm relying heavily on Italian books and journal articles, which are going to take me some time to work through. So this is quite an expedition, both physically and mentally. I really did some exercise in Italy, by the way. But I want to be as thorough as I can. Probably the strangest thing about the walls is that there's no conclusive dating evidence for them. In fact, the whole subject is very controversial. They bear more than a passing resemblance to the polygonal walls found in Mycenae, which date to the Middle Bronze Age, and in the early 20th century, local legends did associate them with a Greek culture called Pelasgi. The implication of these stories was that a group had traveled from an area inhabited by the Mycenaean civilization to Italy, bringing their wall construction techniques with them, long before the Greek colonies of the Classical period, when some areas of Italy formed part of Magna Graecia. However, no evidence has been found for these people. In the 1950s, the classical archaeologist and Roman topographer Giuseppe Lulli concluded that the walls had been built by the Romans. He classed them as Opus Cilicium. Lulli based this on a reference by Vitruvius to a building technique called Cilice, but this was not an actual description, so it's not clear if he was talking about polygonal walls or not. Lully also noted that an inscription by Roman magistrates on the upper section of the wall of the Ferentino Acropolis claims that they were responsible for both the upper and lower courses of stonework, the lower part being polygonal, and they refer to this section as Silice, the same word used by Vitruvius. I personally don't see the stones of the Ferentino Acropolis as particularly polygonal. There are other walls in Ferentino which are much more clearly of the polygonal type, but I'll get into that in a future video on that town. Astrophysicist and archaeoastronomer Giulio Madley has a theory on this actually. 
There have been various other attempts to date polygonal walls, and overall the academic consensus is a Roman origin. Lully was not alone in his conclusion. Dating is based on pottery and organic remains found in the vicinity of the walls and sometimes inside the infill when the walls form part of a platform. These dates are usually around the 2nd and 3rd centuries BCE. There's also been quite a bit of debate about typology and whether there are different types of polygonal walls which might belong to a chronological evolution in style. By the way, none of these walls actually exist in Rome itself, just the countryside. And as you can see, they look more like remnants of walls that have been reused as foundations for Roman buildings and structures. In fact, there are a wide range of different uses for them, all of which act as foundations or supporting structures. They can be found in fortifications, road substructures, agricultural terraces, temple platforms, river embankments, and villa foundations, amongst other architecture. Julio Mali wrote a useful paper summarizing some of the problems with this Roman dating. Firstly, Romans wrote about and illustrated their construction techniques a lot. And these always referred to square blocks known as opus quadratum. For some reason, they didn't mention these polygonal walls, even though you would expect them to be quite proud of such achievements. Secondly, the construction methods they used, incorporating pulleys and tackles, wouldn't have suited these irregularly shaped blocks and they never mentioned any other equipment or mechanisms. Thirdly, Romans constructed arches, whereas the polygonal walls make use of trilithon doorways and upside-down Vs. It's clear that in places the Romans had reused these megalithic entrances and turned them into typical Roman arches. So there's a lot against the Roman dates for them. Let's go back further into the history of the Italian mainland to see why the problem isn't easy to solve. As I mentioned, the Mycenaean civilization rose to prominence in the area now known as Greece during the Middle Bronze Age. It's famous for its polygonal walls and its megalithic entrance to the Mycenae citadel known as the Lion Gate. Other major Mediterranean cultures contemporary with this one were the New Kingdom in Egypt, the Hittite Empire in Anatolia, the Talayotic culture in Menorca, and the Nuragic civilization in Sardinia. These cultures had differing levels of sophistication but were all far more organized, urbanized, and artistically expressive than the scattered groups making up the rest of the Mediterranean at the time. The people inhabiting Italy's mainland in the Middle Bronze Age are known as the Apennine culture. They grazed animals and led a rural life. Their pottery is known as burnished ware and was decorated with spirals, geometric patterns, and dots. They were not urbanized and didn't have the sophisticated artistic expressions and construction techniques of the contemporary Mediterranean civilizations I've just referred to. In the Late Bronze Age, the proto villanovan culture appeared, which practiced cremation and probably came from Northern Europe. By the Iron Age, this culture started to develop distinct regional variations. One of these, the Latial culture, was located in the old Latium region, which now corresponds to central Lazio. Another, called the Villanovan culture, developed into the Etruscan civilization, which inhabited parts of what is now Tuscany, Umbria, and Lazio. Other tribes, such as the Hanici and Volsci, also occupied what is today part of the Lazio region. There's a lot of research into where these cultures came from and the linguistic implications. Also, there were many other tribes in Iron Age Italy. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just giving a basic overview of the history of the Lazio region, which is where a huge amount of polygonal walls can be found. The point I'm making in all of this is that these were not megalith building cultures in Bronze Age and Iron Age Italy. They did not have sophisticated urban states. They were mostly nomadic pastoralists with small defensible hamlets. The Etruscans eventually developed an organized state system during the Orientalizing and Archaic periods, but earlier on the society didn't have that level of complexity. So the question still remains, who built the polygonal walls and why? Incidentally, the Mycenaean civilization collapsed in the Late Bronze Age. No one knows why. It would be fun to say they moved to Italy and started teaching everyone how to build polygonal walls, but there's simply no evidence for this. 
Perhaps the rural pastoralists of the Italian mainland came into contact with the Mycenaeans somehow and learnt construction techniques from them. But it would be rather strange to have adopted that part of their culture and nothing else. It really is quite the mystery. To be clear, these walls are all over the Lazio region, as well as others. I've only explored a few of these polygonal structures. What I also find intriguing is that polygonal walls feature in sections of the tumuli that make up the Etruscan necropolis of Banditaccia, just north of Rome. They aren't as megalithic as the ones we find as part of hilltop fortifications, but I think they are somehow relevant to this story of what was happening in ancient times on the Italian mainland. What if the Mycenaeans and the polygonal wall builders of Italy all belonged to a much older megalithic culture that left its traces all over the place, but at the same time remains elusive? And how did the Etruscans fit into it all? After all, there are still many mysteries about them. There are more videos to come on this sub subject. Stay with me. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'm also on Patreon if you would like to support my work there. Also come and find me on Instagram and Twitter where I post regularly and take a look at my website for GPS locations of the places I visit, some of which are very hard to find.